Game Ranks presents another episode of Before You Buy, the show where we give you some straight-up gameplay and some of our thoughts on the latest games releasing. As usual, I'm Jake Baldino, and today we're talking about Bulletstorm, the full clip edition. Now, first things first, this is a remaster, and I think I know a lot of the problems you guys are going to have with this, and I probably agree with them, but I do want to talk about this game because I, I do still think it's a special game. This was originally released in 2011, but this is kind of like it's getting another chance. It's another chance at this game that was missed or forgotten kind of by lots of people. I like this game a ton, I'm not gonna lie. There's just some issues with how much it offers for how much it costs, making it hard to defend despite having so much good stuff about it. It's a game that has some issues, not only just price issues, but you like it and you wanna defend it, you know what I mean? It almost feels like having a crazy drunk friend that you really love who everyone hates at parties. Or that family member that keeps like ruining Christmases, but they're family and you want to keep them around. The Bulletstorm itself is essentially drunk space pirate Gears of War, where the FPS combat is totally front and center. You play as Grayson Hunt, he's a disgraced soldier forced to do some shady wet work for a space government, uh, then that pisses him off so he goes off on his own freelancing, being a space pirate, and just basically being a drunk asshole until he crash lands on an abandoned resort planet with his now semi-android friend Ishii, and you have to kill a bunch of stuff. It doesn't really matter, it's lighthearted, we'll get to it more later, but the game itself, you know, at first glance, it definitely seems generic. It looks Gears of war -y, or even kind of like Borderlands, but it's just really damn fun. Gunplay here is finely tuned, and some of my favorite I've had in a single-player experience in a long time, save for something like the likes of Doom. It's fairly fast, it moves and handles well, even on console. Yes, this is PS4 gameplay, sorry PC fans, we couldn't get our hands on that one quick enough. But the shooting has impact and real feel, and the weapons are all pretty fun. Well, they're not the most creative weapons you've ever seen. You know, you have your shotguns, machine guns, sniper rifles, stuff like that, but they're, they all just feel really well, and they all have a standard fire and usually an alternate charge shot variant type thing. But it's really about their use. These weapons are all designed to brutally blast away your enemies. You know, like, heads, arms, and legs go flying in explosions of blood, and it just makes the shooting feel that much more satisfying. The combat really revolves all around creativity. You get skill shots. Skill shots are key and make it kind of like a literal manifestation of an arcade first-person shooter game. You score points that flash on the screen for the more creative your kills are. You can then go and spend these points on ammo and upgrades for your weapons, so you want to be as creative and nasty at killing as possible. And thankfully, at least, the game gives you tons of options to do so. There's environmental kills, like stuff with man-eating plants, spikes, exploding crates, electric wires, water, fire, etc. You have a lot of different abilities yourself at your disposal. You can kick enemies into like this slow motion status, or you can fling them towards you with this like whip-like grapple called the leash. With these abilities, you're allowed to set up and chain a whole bunch of different ways of killing people and being accurate or being completely crazy. It's really up to you. Between all that stuff and the weapon types, there's just a lot of fun to be had in just how you kill enemies. And also the list of skill shots you can earn is really a good way of kind of the game pushing you to experiment because unlocking all these kill shots is kind of like a fun, weird version of like a sedition video game collectible. I've gushed about it enough. Hands down, this is the best part of the game. The shooting mechanics are the, are the best. It's really fun. The game itself is almost like a completely linear adventure. That's a big and valid complaint, especially for some people who don't like linear games. But for me, the variety and the pace the game keeps makes up for that. There's always a new set piece. There's always new enemies, environments, weapons, or like a crazy turret or a chase scene or sequence. There's always something going on and happening that you never really have time to stop and think about how you're not running around in an open world. It's paced incredibly well, it moves along at a nice pace, and you're kind of always just being entertained. However, a lot of the jokes and dialogue can be pretty cringeworthy to some. I mean, the way they use profanity in this game is creative. They throw around the word dick a lot in a lot of ways you never thought you would hear it ever. But humor is a very nuanced thing. Some people are going to find this funny, and some people are going to be annoyed by it. That's just how humor works. But if you're not a fan of the writing, it might seem really jarring considering it's surrounded by fantastic production values with some pretty good adventurous musical score and good visuals. This is a Master, of course, but it's not a very old game. Here you get better resolutions on PC and PS4. You have the option of having something closer to 4K. It runs at 60 FPS, although I did notice on console it did take a dip here and there when things got hectic, and I think that is pretty inexcusable because it is a remaster from a 2011 game. But otherwise, it looks pretty good. It gets the job done. Going through the game, dealing with the characters and stuff, whether you like them or not, uh, the underlying story and the quick adventure itself is just short and sweet and simple. The characters are annoying, but I will say the adventure is fun. The game doesn't give 
give you a lot after you beat the campaign, but I, I still think some of it is worth mentioning. There's these playable echo challenges, and now there's a DLC from the first game, which, you know, admittedly wasn't a huge amount, but now you get it. You also get full clip mode, which lets you replay the campaign again, where you can carry all your weapons, not just limited to three, which was annoying. And if you get all weapon skill shots, you unlock infinite ammo for that weapon. So it's just a really chaotic way to replay the campaign. But speaking of ways to replay the campaign, you can also replay the whole campaign as Duke Nukem, which doesn't make any sense at all. It's pretty funny and silly, I guess. It's also kind of half-assed because they just slapped the character model on the current character model of Grayson, and they dubbed over his lines with actual Duke Nukem lines, just kind of randomly reacting to everything that's going on around him. It kind of just feels like, hey, we own the rights to Duke Nukem. We're not gonna make another game, so let's throw him in this. So it kind of makes sense. But again, you gotta be really into this game's campaign to want to play through it again as Duke Nukem. There's also multiplayer, which is a nice way of at least getting some more legs out of the combat. The, the, the multiplayer is co-op though. It's called Anarchy and you get 12 maps and it's basically a wave-based co-op horde mode type of thing. It's pretty fun, but like it did in 2011, it just doesn't really have a lot of staying power. Thankfully, if you are really obsessive with the combat stuff, you can play the echoes and really hone down and obsess getting the highest scores. But now I gotta kind of elaborate on the point I made in the beginning of the video. Uh, this is a short and sweet campaign. It's like six or seven hours, give or take, with not a lot of other content. Meaning for a lot of people, a full price game, a $60 price in the United States, is asking way too much for Bulletstorm. And you know what? I don't blame you. I get it. I can't totally recommend you run out and buy this for $60 right away because I, I don't think you're going to get your complete money's worth. And I'm not usually the type of person to weigh cost and time spent with a game, but here it's definitely apparent. However, I do think Bulletstorm is a game if you like first person shooters and you like dumb fun and you like killing, I think it's a game you absolutely, absolutely should play through one time in your life. Whether you get it cheap on Steam or you pick up the 360 version or if you wait for the full clip edition to go down in price because it is a solid remaster I do really think you should play it. I like it a lot. It's not perfect at all It's very much a B tier game, but it's got a lot of charm to it and it's fun as hell So I definitely can recommend bullets though. I'm just not at full price But that's how a before you buy works guys You know what it is I give you some pros some cons and some personal opinion and definitely a lot of personal opinion in this video I will admit that uh, but now I definitely want to hear yours down in the comments if you were someone who played it in 2011 Are you playing it again? Are you double dipping? I want to hear from you I also definitely want to hear from people who have never seen or heard about this game or never really cared about it. What are you thinking about it now? Do you think this is something you think is worth trying? I do think it is. Just maybe reconsider going out and buying it right this second. Whatever you think about Bulletstorm, I do want to hear from you. I'll be down in the comments answering any questions you guys have as much as possible if you have any. But I'll also be on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Jake Baldino if you have any questions over there as well. But you guys know the deal by now. I would hope clicking that like button helps us out a ton and we really appreciate it. And if for some reason you haven't subscribed to us yet, what are you doing? Subscribe because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.